Hi, this is my 3D print shader with which you can add print layers, top layer fill and imperfections all with a single node. It can be used with any material and as an asset in Blender's new asset browser. It is optimized for cycles with adaptive subdivisions and micro displacement, but also works in EV for fast previews. This shader is perfect for quickly showing what a 3D model could look like if you 3D printed it. Maybe you just want a preview for you or a client, or render product images for an online shop of 3D printed models, or just to give your renders an interesting new look. Whatever your goal is, if you're into 3D printing, you'll want this shader. Of course, it is not the result of a real slicer program, but a simple approximation of print layers. But with the top layer fill simulation and the random imperfections, it does look quite realistic. Here's how you can use it in Blender 2.92 or later. The .blend file comes with a complete scene and a 3D printed plastic node group to get you started. On this plastic node you can set the color, add imperfections, set the cutoff threshold for the special top layer and of course the amount of displacement effect you like. Let's look inside this node and we can see that we just have a simple principled shader for the plastic material for cycles and another one for Eevee, but the real magic comes from this 3D printed layer node. We can use this node really with any material since it only plugs into the displacement socket of the material output. You can set the layers here, the higher the value the more layers you will get, the imperfections, top layer cutoff, top fill lines rotation in degrees and the displace scale. The displacement output is for cycles micro displacement and the height output can be used for bump mapping in Eevee. Let's look at EV first. Simply plug the height output into a bump node, set the strength to 0.2 or 3 for example, plug that into the normal and clear code normal and you're done. To get the full potential of this 3D print shader you will want to render in cycles however. First, like I said before, we make use of cycles micro displacements. How do you enable micro displacement in cycles? Set the feature set to experimental, add a subdivision modifier to the object at the bottom of the modifier stack and enable adaptive subdivision. In the materials tab switch displacement to displacement and bump. Now we wire up the displacement which gives us the horizontal printed layers. But our top layer fill is gone. The reason for this is that using displacement actually physically changes the geometry when rendering, which means the displaced geometry now makes it so that the 3D printed layers node cannot correctly find where the top fill should be any longer. And we have to help it a little bit by opening the text editor, opening the big normals to vertex colors script, which is also included in the blend file, and with the object selected simply hitting the little play button. And voila, we have the top layer in cycles. And everything looks awesome. Don't forget that for each object you wish to apply the 3D printed effect to, you have to enable micro displacement like shown before and execute this bake normals to vertex colors script once. Now let's use the assets this material pack comes with in a brand new scene. First I copy the downloaded crispy 3 dprinted.blend file to my asset library path. And of course, make sure that the path is actually configured to be an asset library here in the preferences. Now let's make a 3D printed Suzanne. Make sure we have enough geometry for baking the normals to vertex colors with a subdiv modifier and applying it. Now add a subdiv modifier and enable adaptive subdivision. Open the asset browser and the correct asset library and drag and drop the plastic 3D printed material onto Suzanne. Make it orange, which seems to be a very popular color for 3D prints, with Blender 2.92 still being in alpha, using the script as an asset doesn't work yet. And by the time you watch this, you might simply be able to drag and drop the script asset into your file somehow, but for now we have to go the good old route of appending the big normals to vertex colors script and executing it with Suzanne selected. Hit F12 to render and here she is. We can clearly see the top fill here, but also here, here and even here. And of course the imperfections which make this entire render look much more realistic. I followed the same exact steps for this Sphinx miniature. 
just with a different color, which looks a bit like chocolate, don't you think? And this is a great example why that top fill layer feature is so important. Otherwise, all of this would just be smooth. So this is the 3D print shader for Blender 2.92 and later. Available now from blendermarket.com as a one-time purchase or for all gold tier patrons from patreon.com slash crispy, including all future updates. I hope you enjoyed this shader as much as I enjoyed making it. Do tag me if and when you create some cool looking renders. Thank you for watching. Crispy out.